not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Fear not, for I. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. With my righteous right hand Fear not, for I am with you Be not dismayed For I am your God I will strengthen you I will help you I will uphold you With my righteous right hand Hi everybody, um, new video time, yay! So a lot's been going on lately and so I haven't had a chance to sit down and really go and, and concentrate on what I should be you know talking about and so I took a, a some time well I had to take some time off I had you know some some issues I need to take care of you know dental work you know tornadoes that stuff you know so um, I I really 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 felt compelled and, and I know this again is through the Holy Spirit because that inkling that we get that little thought that we get about how something is just propelling us forward and, and, and sometimes we get stuck in a, in a rut and a pattern and something's just you kind of gnawing, I guess the best word I could say is kind of gnawing on you and well over the past couple you know week, week and a half since I did that, my last video a lot of things have happened and so because I was tested, and I, and I do believe that I was tested, because there's no other explanation for what I went through, and um, so it really propelled me forward, and I had been thinking about doing this, this video, and again, I'm probably going to break it up because it might be a little bit too long for just one, one setting, so... Um, I really got spiritually inspired and say that three times fast to talk about fear and what not to fear what to fear what fear does to us you know a whole bunch of different issues with fear because everybody has fear and worry and stress and anxiety and panic some much more so than others and the reason why we have these extended periods of some people that just are riddled with anxiety and panic and fear it's all it's all fear based you know it's, it's a fear of something that we get into our heads and that's that's the enemy okay that's Satan finding his little way to distract us from what is true and what is real because the fears that we have now there's rational fears and there's irrational fears okay rational fears are having our children grow up um, a lot of people their children are now in the military and they're getting deployed overseas um, it, being fearful for your child 
that's a rational fear. Okay, um, an ir irrational fear would be something, um, something along the lines of like agoraphobia, and that's the fear of leaving your house because everything outside is doom and gloom, and so you shelter yourself inside your house, and a lot of people have that. They don't know that, that that's the word for it. But um, I myself found out something about myself the other day just from doing research and reading and, and you know, the spirit opens our eyes and our hearts, and I've said this time and time again because it's so true. He opens our hearts and our eyes and our minds to things because eventually, you know, it's on God's timeline. It's not our timeline. Nothing about this, any of us, is, has anything to do with us. It's all about God. We are his creation. He gave us free will, and we screwed all that up. <laughs> you know, we still do, but he loves us so much he's he's made it all right again through Christ and but you know I learned a new thing about myself the other day that you know I go to church and but there's there's a lot of times where I just I have anxiety about going to a church service and I never understood why it wasn't going to church itself it was just being in the sermon and that shouldn't be fearful. We should be able to go and look forward to going to a sermon. And I would have his. It, it, I, I have an anxiety disorder, but I'm. I'm. He's working with me through all that. But I learned that there is an actual diagnosis of fear of sermons. I don't have the word in front of me, but it made sense. I'm like, but why? Why would I have a fear of going to a sermon in church? You know and. I, I, I'm still processing that one, you know, but it's because I'm not, I, I wasn't putting my full faith and full trust into Christ and into God. Because sometimes we live so long in a certain state of mind and it's, an, it's like an OCD, you know, obsessive compulsive disorder or thought. It's, there's also an obsessive compulsive thought disorder that they've they've come on on come along with but we don't we we latch on to one thought and that thought keeps lingering and we keep thinking about it and we keep going th through the motions of it and then that that thought turns into fear because we've taken God out of the equation okay and so I'm just as human as the next person I'm I'm no better than anybody else. I will never be as perfect as Christ because Christ was God. Okay, and we will one day get there. You know, it's promised to us, the ones that, those of us that truly believe. So, I wanted to, to do a video and talk about fear. Okay, and, and the different kind of fear and hit a little bit on faith versus fear because I've done a lot of faith videos and then I want to give a little bit of proof at the end of this video about because everybody fear comes a lot of spiritual fear, fear comes from not having a presence of God a feeling of him or you know we can't touch him we can't feel him but Jesus Jesus was just like with Thomas you know when he was resurrected, he came back and Thomas touched him and he kneeled down. He's like, you're our Lord. And, and, and Christ said, you know, you believe me now because you can you can feel me. But blessed are those that believe that don't see or feel me, you know, because that's going to be a great reward. But we we're going to have these doubts. We're, we're, we're going to is in our in our forward progression in our faith. We're going to have fear. We're going to. It's the enemy trying to completely sabotage a relationship that we're trying to to um, become one with with God and Christ and, and through the Holy Spirit. And but He promises us that if we stay steadfast until the end, I mean, He He's going to be there for us through all of it. So. Anyway, I'm going to jump into this. The first time, the first part I want to talk about is it's um, on a website called Soul Shepherding, and it talks about fear not 365 days a year. Okay, and I'm only going to hit on this a little bit, 
but it talks about how how many fear nots are there in the Bible okay because the Bible is our teaching that God le left for us you know he, he used the Israelites he used Israel he used the Jewish community to spread the word of him of the true God in heaven the true Messiah the Holy Spirit he 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 had all that planned out and it's so wonderful to see that but you know he he has this book it was it was produced by the Spirit through man inspired by the Spirit and it's the Bible okay and that's God's everyday book okay and I talked about this I think last video about how we're constantly seeking knowledge because of our uncertainty and our fears I mean our fears like I said they they're different for every person and every life situation but we're all alike we're all connected to God you know we all have the spirit in us it's just it's in our soul it's just up to us to 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 open our hearts and accept him in the truth and once we do that it gets less and less and less okay and it, it it's a hard journey to walk because we weren't meant to have fear we weren't meant to to struggle we weren't meant to do any of that but he fixed it he fixed it he fixed us well he fixed the situation for us and I'm gonna get into that a little bit a little bit more to help hopefully squanch down our fears okay well, anyway so through this um, soul shepherding website it talks about fear not the most repeated command in the Bible in fact it's been said that there are 635 fear knots in the Bible one fear not for every day of the year in fact uh, Lloyd Ogleville in facing the future without fear said that there are 366 fear knots in the Bible one for every day of the year including leap year uh, God doesn't want us to do a single day without hearing his word of comfort, fear not. But then he says, actually, there are more than 365 fear nots in the Bible. Thank God, because we need to be reminded to fear not and to trust God every day. And that's, that's, absolutely, that's absolutely true. We can't move forward um, in our progression okay with God if we have an exceedingly amount of fear because that fear is and I'm gonna get into that here in a second that fear is blocking our faith okay so going to gotquestions.org again great site um, it says what does the Bible say about fear the Bible mentions two specific types of fear Okay, and this is what we're going we're gonna to focus on just a little bit here, okay? The first type of fear is be beneficial and is to be encouraged. The second type is a detriment and is to be overcome, okay? The first type of fear is the fear of the Lord. The type of fear does not necessarily mean to be afraid of something. Rather, it is the... Uh, all of God okay the the reverence for his power power and glory however it is also proper respect for his wrath and anger okay in other words the fear of the Lord is what they say is a total acknowledgement of all that God is which comes through knowing him and his attributes okay so having a healthy respect of fear for God is absolutely what you should have as a Christian Okay, you know, not as a fear is, uh, as a bad thing, okay, because we know what God's capable of doing. I mean, maybe we don't. We can't even probably grasp what God's capable of doing. You know, as a Christian, you start looking around the world and, you know, it's <clears throat> an example of this, you know, in God's awesomeness. To me, you know, I was watching the other night, I was watching, um something about volcanoes it was just like a little I watched it for a few minutes but um, you know watching these volcanoes erupt and 
you know, and, and seeing the changes of the earth, you know, all the time. And it kind of hit me, you know, I was sitting there thinking, I was, I was like, why does, why does, why would God have volcanoes, you know, or, you know, mosquitoes? I hate mosquitoes. I mean, if I, when I die, I'm going to be like, why mosquitoes? Why? You know, you couldn't have come up with something else. There's a reason for mosquitoes. I know there is a good reason for them. I'm just curious as to why he made them. I'm just curious. But anyway, back to volcanoes. Um, and it kind of hit me that the awesomeness of God to see a volcano is because the earth is a living organism of multifaceted components. And because of that, you sit there and you think about it. I mean, even if you look at like, you look at the human body in, in, in the, what we know now about the human body and how it works, he, we can't comprehend it because we're so, we don't, we have those blinders on. And I, I don't think we can comprehend it at this point in time. We will eventually understand it all. You know, I mean, I, I truly believe that and that we're all connected, but the earth itself is, is a living organism constantly growing and changing and, and I don't know if it's ever going to stop growing or changing. I, I, I don't know what God has in store for the earth after everything is said and done, but I do, I do believe what it says in the Bible, so I think that, you know, one day, you know, the things that are happening on the earth are, are going to stop. But it's never going to stop in essence of, because He created the earth. He created everything on it. We've ruined it. Really, I mean, that's what it comes down to. We've ruined it. You know, and that's why... I mean, it will go back to one day the way it was, because we, we can't even fathom what it was like when he created it. You know, we get glimpses here, you know, if you look outside and you see the beautiful green and the beautiful animals, and he created all of that. So to fear, have a, a, a healthy respect, not be terrified, but understanding that he has you in the palm of your hand, his hand, sorry, not l literally, but you know, he, he's so magnanimous. He's, 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 I think that's why I, when I keep saying we're all connected, we are all connected. We are all a part of our creator. And, and, and to understand that and have that, because, you know, we read through the Bible and through other, you know, Jewish doctrine, especially, um, God is has can get mad, and He has in the past. Past, you know, He wiped out the world because of all of the evil with Noah. He He had to. He had to just. Uh, the, but then, He promised, "I won't do it again," because I love you so much. But I had to. I had to. I had to hit that restart button because so much bad was going on. There's a, excuse me, there's a lot of bad going on now. I think that it, it's mutated into a different kind of badness, but there's always been bad and evil. It's, it's a constant. It, it will continue to be a constant and get worse until the end. But to understand that, to have that healthy fear is not to, f like, to be terrified of God, but have a respect for God. Because he is your creator. He is our everyone's creator. He created everything. Okay. So anyway, uh, they continue to say here, fear of the Lord brings with it many blessings and benefits. It is the beginning of wisdom and leads to go a good understanding. And that's in Psalms 111.10. Only fools despise wisdom and, dis and discipline. <laughs> Proverbs 1 7. Furthermore, for the fear of the Lord leads to life, rest, peace, and contentment. Proverbs 19 23. It is the fountain of life.
Proverbs 14, 27, and provides a security and a place of safety for us. Proverbs 14, 26. Thus, they say, one can see how fear in God should be encouraged. However, the second type of fear mentioned in the Bible is not a bit official at all. This is the spirit of fear mentioned in 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us spirit of fear, but a power and a, but of power and love and of sound mind. Okay, and that's in the new King James Version. A spirit of fearfulness and timidity does not come from God. Fear doesn't come from God. I mean, over and over and over again in the Bible, we read and we, we see him telling, don't fear. Angels have come down, don't be afraid. His spirit comes, don't be, don't, don't, don't be fearful. Fear is not of God. Okay? That needs to be remembered. God loves us. God loves us so much we don't even comprehend that kind of love. We will one day, but right now we don't. Okay? However, sometimes we are afraid. Sometimes the spirit of fear overcomes us. And, the over, and to overcome it, we need to trust in and love God completely. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. 1 John 4, 18. So if you're fearing, if you're having anxiety, if you're having panic, you're not trusting God. And I'm, I'm just as guilty of that as everybody else out there. I, I am. For not fully trusting in God. You know, I do these videos because I feel compelled to and I feel it's the Holy Spirit. God's way of me getting to whoever's going to watch them. I still, I still battle with it myself. But I, 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 I have faith. And I believe in him that he will always be there no matter what I'm going through and what no matter what you're going through he promises us that and he and he sent Jesus to, to like seal the deal okay so for example they say Isaiah 41 10 encourages us do not fear for I am with you do not anxiously look about you for I am your God I will strengthen you Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Often we fear the future and what will, what will become of us. But Jesus reminds us that God cares for the birds of the air. So how much more will he provide for his children? So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows in Matthew 10, 31. Just these few verses cover many more, or sorry, cover many different types of fear. God tells us not to be afraid of being alone, of being too weak, of not being heard, and of lack of physical necessities. These adept, uh, admonishments continue throughout the Bible, covering the many different aspects of the spirit of fear. Okay. In Psalm uh, 5811, the psalmist writes, in God I trust, I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? This is an awesome testimony to the power of trusting in God. Regardless of what happens, the palmist will trust in God because he knows and understands the power of God. The, the key of overcoming fear, now listen to this, okay? The key, then, is a total and complete trust in God. Okay, trusting God is a, refuse, is a refusal to give in to fear. It is a turning to God even in the darkest times and trusting Him to make things right. This trust comes from knowing God and knowing that He is good. Not evil, good. God is all good. He is holy. There's nothing bad about Him. Or, nothing. Nothing bad is from God okay as Job said when he was experiencing some of the most difficult trials recorded in the Bible 
Thou he slay me, yet I will trust in him. I actually read Job last night, or the night before. I think it was last night. I was reading through Job, and I saw how Satan was trying to, to play with God's creation. That's what he was doing. Oh, you can't possibly have, no. Nah. You know, and God's like, well, look at Job. He will never turn against me because he, 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 he trusts in me. And he didn't. Even though he lost everything and he was just plagued with illnesses and everything. And he, his wife was like, curse God and die. I mean, come on. You, really? You've had enough of this. Our, our kids are all dead. We've lost all of our stuff. We're practically homeless. We have no more money. None of this stuff. And he never did it. God told Satan, go ahead, but you can't take his life. And he, he, he lived through it. And what happened? What happened to Job? Does anybody know? Class? He got everything back in spades. After all of his, his torture, and it, it, it didn't happen overnight. It sounds kind of like it did in the Bible, but you have to be realistic. It probably happened over somewhat of a time span here. That he was just, he, he was just everything. He just, you know, I, I can only imagine. I mean, he talks in, in, in the book of Job, he talks about, just let me die. You know, I mean, please, let me, let me just get this over with because it's, it's so bad. I'm mourning so much. I'm in so much pain, but he never, ever, ever stopped trusting God, ever. He never blamed God, never. Let me finish here. He says, they say, once we have learned to put our trust in God, we no longer, we will no longer be afraid in the things that come against us. We would be like the palmist who said, with confidence, let all who take refuge in, in, um, in you be glad. Let them sing, forever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Psalms 511. 